to this amazing podcast. Finally got a podcast, that's what it's called. <laughs> um, you know, I just wanna know how y'all been. I've been doing good in the past week since the last episode. And yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not really good with the introductions, to these things, I'm trying to get more comfortable doing that. But without any further ado, I want to get into a topic of my music and the things I've been working on. And the first thing that I want to say is that I have a release date for the lo-fi instrumental project I'm working on because I told y'all about that last week. And I say I'd give you a date by this week if I had worked on some more stuff. And I have. And the date will be on April 23rd. And the name of the project will be called Sunday Morning Coffee. I don't know if I said that last week or not, but that's the name of the title of the project. It's Sunday Morning Coffee. Um, what it is just it's a bunch of instrumentals that I want to put together, maybe 10 or 11, um, just to, just for something to relax to, maybe something to drive along to when you get the chance to drive, or you know something to do your homework to, or meditate, whatever you feel like doing when you just listen to the straight instrumental music. Um, hopefully it hopefully you'll enjoy it more so than anything else yeah it's the first time I've, I'll be putting a whole project on Spotify and I think that now's the time <laughs> I think it's just something I've been wanting to do for years is just have my music on streaming platforms and I wish I could put some of my old projects on there but a lot of them I just sampled a bunch of stuff so yeah so legally I Cannot distribute like that. <laughs> yeah. Copyright. Don't sample that often, kids. Nah. <clears throat> but seriously, um, this is a very big moment for me, especially on that day. It'll be even bigger. Just having the ability to have it released on that date will be pretty amazing and pretty awesome. And there'll be a single that'll be coming out next week. Uh, the first instrumental that y'all will hear will be coming out next week that will be a part of it and that is the podcast I'm kidding now we're like two minutes in I guess I just wanted to also talk about some things before I go further into the podcast some things about my music personally that I want to get off my chest it's nothing too crazy nothing too personal um <laughs> it's just man being home in my room almost every day well really every day I'm in my room I go outside and work out and just go for walks but I stay in my room and I work on music a good bit of time every now and then I work on some music it's it's so fun having that creativity flowing through, you know, because it makes sometimes it's so easy to do some things. Like, it's easy for me to make a beat sometimes. It's easy for me to write a song. And, like, this podcast, as I've said before, it's easy for me to let my voice into something like this. It's just now I'm getting more into the creative flow of things and wanting to do more things. And it's making me more comfortable doing it and being more productive and being able to just, you know, be able to, you know, show off my hard work and skills. And I've always knew it would pay off. So. It's funny when people are just kind of like are upset about staying home, stuff like that. I'm not. This is nothing new to me. I'm not the biggest person to go out. So this is honestly a really great thing for me because it's helping me stay more focused on my music and focused on me. So I, I'm enjoying this time in my life. And I'm refusing to look at this these things that's going on now as a negative. I'm trying to find the positive in it always. And finding the positive in this is... It's giving me a chance to be more productive and think about my music and think about other things and how I want to go about other things. And the, the fact that it's giving me the incentive 
to do this podcast more often is also a great thing too because back when I was in school I just wouldn't even give myself the time to find it not saying I was always busy I always had the free time to do this podcast but I never chose to do this podcast and now I'm like well I got nothing else to do might as well keep going on with this podcast and see how far it will take me and you know hopefully it'll take me to somewhere like you know it's like a studio because right now I'm in my bedroom it's fun times over here no it's fun it's fun I enjoy it it's uh one of the coolest things ever just making a podcast and seeing if anyone will listen to it. A few people listen to it, so I appreciate y'all, the, y'all, the listener, listening to this. You're awesome. But also another thing, and I'll go more in depth as to why I'm saying this now, but um, a lot of times, and I could say this, what I doubt is that hard work pays off. And for me, I'm saying this because almost for seven years, I've been working hard on music. And so many things have came into my life that I have made essential to my own progress. Uh, The fact of getting a microphone, getting like this pop filter around this microphone, getting a laptop, getting Ableton, getting an audio interface, getting a guitar, and just more and more equipment comes to my life and more and more things are fortunate enough to get these things makes me entirely grateful for the fact that I've put so much work in is that now my I'm reaping the benefits of my hard work I'm being rewarded for these things because there would be moments where I really would think like what am I really doing this for you know and as time went on I realized like this isn't just a hobby for me this is really something that means a lot to me deep in my heart. This is something I love to do. I've never really found something I love to do like that until I started making music. And then I was like, wow, I really enjoy manipulating sounds. I enjoy making a drum pattern that sounds really good. I enjoy flipping a sample if I want to. I enjoy making chords. I enjoy playing the guitar. I enjoy just doing all these different things. I enjoy listening to interviews and just hearing how people go about their own process like some people could find that boring but to me it's so interesting and it's just something that like always always fascinated me about it and you know as time goes on I was fortunate enough to obtain an amount of money to buy these things also so I was able to give myself some of these things and people giving me some of these things because they saw that I really had a passion for it and awarded, rewarded me with things such as, you know, this microphone. And I would go online and order this pop filter and order my guitar or go to the store and buy this computer. Just all stuff like that. And just, I would, always, like, I would advise anyone for whatever career they decide, if they're really determined to do something, is invest into that career. And, you know, save up your money and go for that goal. Like, I don't know, you want to be a fashion designer and you want to make original clothing, but you don't have a sewing machine, but you want this really good sewing machine. I'd say save up for it and get that sewing machine. Maybe save up and get some needles and learn how to hand sew also. Learn how to knit and then also do that, you know. Just that way you can be very versatile in your field. And not be pigeonholed to just, I can only sew on a sewing machine. I can't hand sew. I don't know how to do that. I can't knit. I don't know how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I'm glad to pigeonhole myself into like just sampling and not using actual original instruments or being open to using original instruments. Or I didn't pigeonhole myself into a specific genre of music. Like, I like hip hop music and I like lo fi, but. I don't want to do lo-fi for all my life. Like, hopefully, like, no one looks at me and goes, that's the guy who makes lo-fi music. Like, no. No. I do more than that. But it's just, like, you know, always strive to be better and always try to diversify your catalog and your expertise. 
I would say also, you know, take a time to focus on one little thing and then go to the next thing and then go to the next thing. Like, like for me, like if I'm focused on lo-fi right now, I can focus on lo-fi and I can go to another genre like synthwave and then focus on that. All right, cool, I'm done with synthwave. Okay, cool, I can go to R&B now. Dumb R&B, I can go to jazz. And I can just learn little bits of it and incorporate into my own music and then mix them all together. Because that's what I like to do. I like to mix sounds together and mix different genres in some type of form or capacity. And just see how they sound together. That's what at least it sounds like in my mind. Like when I listen to my beats, I'm like, oh, these sound like two different genres mixed together. I'm like, hopefully, you know, it sounds something good to the listener. You know? One thing I'm really working on and so you know it's 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 I it's not ironic but it's weird saying what I'm about to say because of the fact I'm on a podcast and it's to sing and stuff like that. And it's weird because I'm talking right now and I'm allowing my vocals to be heard. But I guess I guess singing is different. It's more vulnerable that you're allowing yourself to hit certain notes. And not really being afraid of someone judging you and saying, well, you're off key. Well, you are not in, like, you <laughs> not sound good. But I have enough belief in myself that, one, I can stay in tune and in key in a song. And, two, I've never had any complaints from anyone who's ever heard me sing. So, I don't know what the worry is. I don't know what the big fear is, but I think, I think fear also helps to drive some people, you know. Because you got to get rid of it, you know. I don't want to say I'm afraid. I'm more so nervous. But I I got it. Don't worry. And now I got that out the way. I just wanted to let another announcement on here. Because we're about to transition into something pretty amazing, y'all. I finally got my first guest on this podcast. And in a few minutes, we will all hear who it is. I will introduce this person, and then we will talk. We will talk about music and other hobbies that we enjoy. I can't go into too much depth into it, because we are both very much into similar things. But if I told you the things that we were into, I feel like some people would be like, I think I know who he's talking about. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. I don't even know who really listens to this podcast, so you may not even know who I'm talking about. You may not even know what this podcast is even about. Honestly, it's about music and whatever I feel like talking about at the moment. I don't mind. Speaking of what I want to talk about at the moment, let me just, before we go into the transitioning, uh, talking to our guests, <laughs> let me just give a breakdown of what's happening this week. This is, Today is April 3rd, 2020, as I'm dating myself right now. Tomorrow is April 4th. Don't know if anyone knows this about me. I'm a very huge wrestling fan. What I'm very excited about is like WrestleMania tomorrow. It's tomorrow and Sunday. Two day of event. It's normally just on Sundays. The reason I'm bringing this up is because they're still having WrestleMania with no audience. And the thing about it is, I think a lot of people are wondering how good of a WrestleMania is going to be without an audience. In my personal opinion, I think it's going to be pretty good. Like, I think it's going to be amazing. And, like, and when I say amazing, I mean amazing in the sense of, like, there's no one here, and you still manage to pull off a very good show. I think they can do it. Because, fam, they're, the E stands for entertainment. Why would they not try to entertain us? Whether the booking is good booking or not, that's not the point. The point is to be entertained, honestly. And honestly, like, after the booking, I'm like, I'm not really worried about who wins or who doesn't sometimes. I'm really just kind of wondering, am I going to enjoy this? And I honestly think, just off of pure curiosity, that this is going to be a very good show. It's going to be the best WrestleMania I've seen ever? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. But we'll find out next week after it's all over, because I'll give you all a recap of what I saw and what I enjoyed. I'm not going to do, like, a whole podcast based on what happened on the show. Go watch a wrestling podcast for that one. I'm not here for that. I'm just going to let y'all know what the match I enjoyed. The match I... I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy, but I don't know. I'll, I'll let y'all know. I'll figure it out. 
But without any further ado, let's hit some transition music and then go into our interview with my guest. Let's go. Enjoy. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast. Here we are. I have my guest with me. This person here is a very close friend of mine in the music department. He is probably one of the best drummers I have met. What? <laughs> the look on his face said it all. What? Cool, cool percussionist. Top five best dress I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, a hey. man who is too hard on himself, but he's like really good at what he does. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Martez Stroud in the building. What's up, Martez? Yo, what's up, man? So, how you been? You know, we've been living, trying to survive. COVID, that's all we can do is just survive. Striving and thriving. Striving and thriving. Eating pizza bagels. Exactly. Okay, so I came unprepared with questions. <laughs> it's all good. But uh, the first question I will always ask anyone who is a musician is what made you want to do music? Like, when was the first moment you fell in love with music? Oh, man. Uh, the first moment I fell in love with music was probably when I was 10, when I first started playing drum kit. Um, and my cousin, he's a, he's a drummer. He plays jazz uh, gigs for a bunch of stuff. And he's been like, you know, he did, he's in the jazz scene in New York. So he came mm -hmm. home one day and they were just like, Teach Tess something, you know, little 10 year old Martez. I'm just like, yeah, teach me something. At this time, I'm not doing much, you know, I'm 10. So he taught me drums and I said, this is cool. And then I just started listening to a bunch of music. And then when I moved, I met my now best friend who's like, he's like a brother to me. We started a band, he plays guitar. We've known each other since we were 12. And like, just every time I made a friend, it, it was in music in some way. And when I realized that, I, I was thinking I was like 13 or 14 playing drums in church. I was like, wow, my life has been going great in every way because of my connection in music. So I just kind of just went along with that, you know? Life was just, that was just my life with music. Nice. So, hmm. like, who would you say like is your like, inspirations when it comes to making music? Like, do you have any? Oh, um, a lot of like, a lot of artists, a lot of like drummers specifically that I've witnessed either in person or like just followed them. Uh, most recently, I'm really inspired by Larno Lewis. He's one of the drum set players for Star Puppy. Oh, okay. Um, he recorded their, uh, the drums for their What About Me. Well, not What About Me. We Like It Here. That's the song I like. We Like It Here is the album. Uh, he recorded that album. He he has a bunch of solo stuff, and that's great seeing a drum set player doing like his own stuff like that. Uh, he's one inspiration um, for just doing stuff. Uh, another is the percussion composer Ivan Trevino. We've we played pieces by him all the time. You know. Oh yeah, we we played punks by him last semester. Yeah, and like he's a composer, but like at the end of the day, he still is like he's like I'm a composer. I make percussion pieces, but he's still like. A musician overall he's got two groups one group they like like they're a band but they use like marimba vibe and other percussion instrument and another group he it's like he's the percussionist and he plays with either five or six string players like it's pretty dope so like oh, okay yeah, yeah he's him, definitely he's inspiration for that yeah i enjoy watching the videos with him and was it michael Burrett? oh yeah michael burt yeah they yeah yeah just stuff like that's amazing like just play, like meeting up with people and friends and just playing music and just doing that yeah what do you think of uh, uh anderson peck because i always thought like that was like so cool that he could actually oh, play drums and that was like so uh he's actually really good at it so like, yes shock me anderson peck is on a whole nother level of musicianship in my mind he is an amazing drummer his sense of time rhythm all that's amazing but his like thought process musically is amazing because like from his vocals to his instrumental tracks he's definitely like Anderson Pack is probably one of my top three artists right now oh wow. top three favorite artists yeah who are they who are your top three uh number one 
I've been battling with number one for such a long time of like outside of like bands because everyone knows I love Tron. Like, oh yeah, of course. Everyone knows, yeah. But like other artists, like I guess especially with like hip hop, it's got to go Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. Anderson Pack's probably number two. And Kanye West is number three. Interesting. What's your favorite album from each one of them? Hmm. Kendrick. I've been re-listening to Kendrick recently. Um, oh, man. To Pimp a Butterfly is just an amazing album. It, it is just like everyone loves it. But recently I've been liking Good Kid, Mad City. You know, hmm. that's been that's been replayed a lot. Anderson Pack favorite album. That's a tie between. Oh, oh, that's that's rough. Because Malibu is pristine. Malibu is absolutely it's pristine. But true. I've been listening to Ventura. But I've been listening to the Ventura instrumental album because I've already heard the album. But like Ventura instrumental, if you go listen to it, like you, it's just it's crazy. So I gotta I gotta say it's a tie between Malibu and Ventura. Oh, okay. Um for Anderson and for Kanye graduation. Oh, of course. Gradu- yes. <laughs> graduation Kanye is that's 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 the Kanye I was like, oh man. That is it was at first my top one favorite album. It's now number two. Eight oh eight beat it because it's just mm. so good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. For those for the other two, I really like Ventura. It's a good album. I also what um Malibu Aventure is very good. I enjoy Oxnard, but like mm, not as much as the other two. If for Kendrick, yeah. I've really just been listening to Damn a lot because that's yeah. I don't know why, but that's like, that, such a good that's album. A, that's a great yeah, it's a great album. It's bro, it won a it run a Pulitzer, Pulitzer, it won an award. Like it, oh yeah, 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 that was why Kendrick, he got a Pulitzer. Yeah, Kendrick went off. The album deserves it for sure. Yeah, am I the only one who knows that? Like, Damn is the culmination of really of like all his past three albums together. Yeah, I I know I definitely could hear it. Like he just took, he just took like all the themes and like feelings, emotions, and then took the took the music itself instrumentally, broke it apart, and just was like able to reconstruct it entirely different. But you still were like, wow, this is this is Kendrick. Like, yeah. This is still Kendrick. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm not the biggest Kendrick fan as I used to be when I was younger, but I can still appreciate the fact that there's a per- that he is still a person who has a bar for himself and he always tries to set a new one uh, for the next one and next thing. And oh, yeah. it definitely still sounds like he gets better over time. So that's really good to hear. Oh, it's constant. <laughs> if you have it, go look up uh, Kendrick Lamar hits XXL cipher <laughs> when he first started. Great cipher. But this man just keeps proving that every like project he does, he just gets so much better. Cause like even young Kendrick was like, "Wow, you're really good, dude." <laughs> like my guy. <laughs> yeah. What was that 2011? Oh my, that was almost 10 years ago. That's crazy. Cause that was in 2011. Yeah, he's been going. Wow, he was on the first XX. Oh, Ooh. time's you flying. Only... He was on it. I think Meek Mill was on it. I think Big Crit, Mac Miller. Yes, Me- Meek Mill and Big Crit. Yes. Yellow Wolf was on it. I think that was it. Uh, I think Travis Scott. I think Travis Scott as well. No, Travis Maybe. was on 2013. He was on the same 13? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I didn't go back yeah. early enough there. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, man. That's. Yeah, that XXL has also been a, something I've been doing over this uh, break, watching a lot of ciphers. I really want to get back into, besides being a drummer, I would love to get back into writing raps and doing stuff, but that's a that's going to be a work in progress. Yeah, same for me too. I'm trying to write more, I'm trying to sing more. It's um, I just now have to find the courage to actually like sing with myself. <laughs> oh, and that's the, and that's the thing, just find that courage, and yeah. that's why I love music. <laughs> yeah, speaking of like. Cause I wanted to ask you about it. What do you think of uh, Mac Miller, and when did you start listening to him? Mac Miller. Oh, man. So, Mac Miller, I feel really bad, too. Mac Miller was one of those artists, but, like, I heard him, and, like, when, what was that song that came out? 
Uh, that song that everybody was singing in high school. I think it was called Knock. Oh, the Knock Knock song? The one, two, two three, three, four. Eight. four. Yeah, yes. okay, yeah. So when that song came out, I was like, yo, this song's amazing. And he released like another song and I was like, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Like, I just, I never really gave Mac Miller as much attention as I should have in all of his albums, but I, lo- I love every song I've heard by Mac Miller. I've loved it all. Like I've never, I never heard, I've never heard a Mac Miller song that I was like, eh, like every song I was like, oh, yeah. this, you know, and like, I didn't know, I didn't know much about Mac Miller as a person either like too, because like, I didn't watch any of his live stuff. I didn't watch any interviews. So, you know, when he had passed away, I was like, yo, that sucks. Cause I feel really bad if like I listen to an artist but if they pass away and I don't know like much of their like legacy, I just I personally feel bad as a musician for not supporting. Mm-hmm. I understand. Yeah, mm-hmm. he he was one of the first people I was listening to the most when I was like getting into music, and he was just like one of my favorite because he could play different instruments and he made his own. Yeah. Beats. So I thought when I found that really out, cool. Yeah. Much respect to any artist that like, especially because like, that's why I like Kanye. Like, if you can play, if you produce your own stuff or do that, like you and the Anderson Pack, yeah, like, yeah. Much respect for, <laughs> and also on the side tangent, Tyler the Creator because he could also play piano and he does a lot of instrumental stuff himself with his like production. So, another. I remember I saw a video of Tyler the Creator just playing the piano and I was like, oh, he can actually play the piano. Yeah, he can act. Yes. That man can that actually was, play, but that was some like the best thing I've ever heard. I was like, okay, he actually knows how to play. So I thought that was so cool. But for sure, Mac Miller is a, is a artist that I definitely would love to probably soon go back and just listen through all of his discography and just you know check out his stuff, his early stuff, his like his latest stuff, like the like the album they were like that got released. I heard half of it. It was like wow, this. This is a great album. Like that was, last, like the. I thought it was really good. My bad. Yeah, it was good. No, it was really good. Yeah. I'd probably say the only album I haven't heard is Blue Side Park and like his earliest mixtapes before Kids. Mm. My friend's a Mac Miller fan. I think he showed me. I think he showed me one of his early mixtapes. But mixtapes are always it's I ah. Uh, that's how you find the true, like the true raw talent of a, a rapper. Find their mixtape. Very find true. Find their mixtape. I remember. I think everyone was saying like his mixtape faces is like his best work ever. And I was listening to. It, I was like, this is nice, but it's not his best. I think the Divine Feminine is his best work. Okay, I'm gonna write that yeah. down. But like, remind faces, myself to look up Matt Miller. Faces is a good mixtape. I will say like it. It it is like one of his best stuff it's first like it's not divine fan is my favorite but faces is like in like the top five top five okay yeah i'm gonna remember that for sure okay. on the subject of tyler creator though can we just like, talk about how how good he evolved like how well he evolved <laughs> into a good artist this is an argument you probably heard me brian and darius at some point in the midi lab like you probably there for a Tyler like argument, but like we're just a bunch of we're just a bunch of dudes who like we appreciate Tyler so much. He's changed so much, but different people have adapted to different sounds. Personally, I I love uh I love Wolf Wolf Tyler. That's my favorite Tyler. Same. Like Wolf, and that's probably one of his greatest albums. And a lot of people can compare it, but people like Darius, he loves Cherry Bomb. I love Cherry Bomb too. Cherry Bomb came out at a very good point in high school for me. Like, I have a lot of good memories listening to Cherry Bomb going to school. But, like, Wolf Tyler was, like, the Tyler. Um, he, he His sound just changes so much. And it's good. Oh, yeah. He's doing what he wants to do. True. I think I remember when I first heard Tyler. Like, because everyone heard Tyler through Yonkers and stuff like that. So, I, I remember hearing <laughs> it. I was like, I don't want to hear, I don't want to listen to the guy who just ate a roach on his video. I was like, I don't care about that. So I listened like to <laughs> Earl or it's like Haji in Odd Future. Oh, yeah. I thought they I thought they were better. And and I listened to Frank Ocean too. So I enjoyed them. And it wasn't until 2013 when Wolf came out. And I was like, oh, he's actually really good. And then I just kept listening. 
I remember I remember listening to Cherry Bomb because that was like during the time like I was like listening to more music and different stuff, and that was like what got me into playing the piano more. Like I wanted okay. to play the piano was because of like Cherry Bomb, not Tyler. I'm gonna say this, and a lot of people are gonna are gonna hate me for this, but in Cherry Bomb, Smuckers, Kanye's verse that was one of his top five verses on a feature. That's just my opinion. People people can get mad at me, but Kanye's Kanye's verse on Smuckers, top five Kanye verses. That's just. <laughs> did you know I that he say. did that verse after hearing Tyler and Wayne's verse? Oh really? Yes, Yo, he literally looked at Tyler right and said, the... you're making me want to rap. <laughs> and actually That's hilarious. Did That's so funny. I didn't know that. So he was just like in the studio and was just like, throw me on the track. This man said, no, I think he was already on it and he rewrote the entire verse. I was like, oh, he like, rewrote it. Oh, I see. Yeah. I, those two verses, that's my favorite Kanye and Wayne verses of that year. What, 2013? 15? 15? Oh, for uh, Cherry yeah. Blonde. I was thinking of Wolf. Oh, gosh. Yo, that was senior year. I would agree. I remember. That yeah, because I remember. I remember. Wayne just had really two good verses that year. Like, his best verses I heard in a while. And it was that verse and his verse on Big Sean's song, Deep, off Dark Sky Paradise. And I was like, it's like two of the best verses I've heard mm. from Lil Wayne in a long time. And then that Kanye verse, it was that verse. And did Only One come out that year? Too? I think Only One came out that year, too. And I was like, Only that's one? a really good Kanye song. Probably. Yeah. I got to go back. That's crazy. Those are some crazy times. 2015 was... A pretty good year. 2015. Oh, I remember, so you said that you said that um, Yonkers was the first song you heard from Tyler. Yes. It was either that I'm, or she. I can't remember. The the very first song I ever heard with Tyler or Odd Future, like the first song ever was Rella. Oh my God. So when I heard that, I was like, who is these group? Who is, who, who are these people? And I saw the music <laughs> video too. So of course I was just like, who... Who are these people? And like, I, I actually didn't like Our Future at first. When I heard Our Future, I was just like, I don't like this. I don't, yeah. So like, and it took, cause I kept hearing singles. I kept hearing Rella. I heard, uh, heard Orange Juice. Um, there's a song with, oh my God. There's a song with him and uh, him and Earl, forgive me. It's called Ass Milk. And I, I, I heard that and I was just like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then I started hearing Earl's solo stuff and then I heard some Haji Beat stuff, and then I heard Odd Future do, oh, what song was it? I think they, actually, I think I heard She, because that was the first time I personally heard Frank Ocean ever, was in She. Was in she. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can see that all these rappers that I've been hearing are all in this same collective group, and that's when I started getting into Odd Future. It was just mainly hearing Tyler and hearing how weird Rella was. I was like, can I really... Do I, do I get you know? But eventually, I like Odd Future is great. And then after they split, I was like, why, <laughs> why, why y'all, why y'all do this? And so now I got to pay attention to Earl, Frank, Tyler, all separately. Haji, I don't know what happened to you, man. But Dude, I know you released something like last year, but it was like a single. I have listened exactly. To it. Yeah, I haven't even him or Domo. I got. Uh, Man, I that was like 2011, 2012. Yeah. I heard like Rella, and I think that's how I got hooked on Haji Beats. And I was like, I was like, okay, I I actually like him, and I listened to his untitled EPs. That's what made me enjoy him. Okay. Earl, I think this was um they said Earl was gone, so. But like I heard his earlier stuff, I was like, I think I just heard. I think it's actually the song called Earl, and I was like, Earl, okay. I was like, okay. Like, I just didn't get it. I was like, 12, and I was like, oh, okay. But then I heard Doris, up. the whole Doris album, and I was like, okay, this is actually 2013. Really yeah, Doris, I can't, I had to make, I had to make sure it was the right year. Doris was definitely the album, because I was in yeah. 2013, 2014. I was, that was my junior year of high hmm. school, I think. Or like half a song, whatever, whatever year it came up, I was like a sophomore or junior year, and like that was like, 
Martez getting more into rap because I really didn't listen to a lot. Well, Martez getting back into rap because early middle school, I was a heavy Wayne fan, heavy, heavy, heavy Lil Wayne fan, and then became a heavy YMCMB fan. And I kind of died, it kind of died around ninth grade. Wiz Khalifa was coming out with a lot of stuff. I was all with Taylor Gay and all that. And then I took a break. And then a couple of years later was when Doris came out. And I was like, oh my God, this is that dude from Our Future. <laughs> Martin, you're like three years older than me, right? No, I should be like, I'm 20. I don't know. You're 20? Well, I just, did you just turn 20? Wait, you turned 21 this year. I turned 20 this year. When was your birthday? The 15th, same as uh, it was the 15th of January. Okay. Yeah. See, yeah. So, like, I'm three years older than you, but I'm actually like two grade levels above you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm trying to think. I'm did like, you graduate? When did you graduate high school? 2018. So 2018? Yeah. Oh, well, then maybe because my birthday is my birthday is early for my class. Well, it's not early. It's like right in the middle. Okay. I guess I am three grade levels above you. Because I, I graduated 2015, but I didn't turn 18 until right before I graduated. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because you and my brother are, like, are born the same year. You're, like, a month older. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because I was trying to think. Well, yeah. I was like, because I, I, I am, like, almost sure that musically, we, like, listen to the same music at, like, the same time. Oh, probably. We probably did at the exact same time, but just different ages. Like, yeah, which is like really weird because I was like in the Lil Wayne in like 2009, 2010, which was like his peak time. And oh, yeah. Then, and that was like 2009 yeah. was when I was in sixth, like sixth grade, like yeah. 2008, 2009, I was in sixth grade. And that's when I was listening to like, guarantee you, I had Lil Wayne on my little MP3 shuffle thing, whatever I had, all my illegal rip files. Same. <laughs> you know, what's weird? Oh, you know what man. actually got me into actually getting a Spotify premium account? What I wanted to listen to Astro World, and I was like, I really don't want to rip it, so I was like, let me just get Spotify. As soon as I lost my laptop, I was like, there goes literally over five years and like thousands of songs that I've ripped from YouTube or like, oh, like going to. I used to, I had, uh, I forgot what software I had, but I would go to interviews and like of rappers, and if they only had a song or something that they freestyled over, like during that interview, I would take the audio and slice it for just that song. Just so I'd be like, oh, yeah, I got so-and-so's freestyle from this interview. <laughs> so, oh, that, wow. yeah, I used to do that a lot. I tried to do it again recently, but it's been hard because, like, I've been listening to a lot of people's freestyles on different ciphers and stuff on YouTube. Oh, uh, man. Who was, like, the last freestyle I heard? You know Daylight? Daylight, yeah. Yes, I heard his watching a reaction video they were doing his on like funk flex and i was like oh oh funk flex <laughs> i I, li I like a good wordplay and that was like top-notch wordplay that i heard i was like okay this is pretty fun man if you want good wordplay any <laughs> any like oh actually any little dicky uh interview if he was with sway or somebody like little dicky's wordplay or uh, Childish Gambino, he yeah. was on hot. Yeah, he was on Hot ninety seven with Rosenberg, and that was like either right after he released because of the internet or right before. But like that interview was amazing, and his Wait, freestyle I, was amazing. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I was yeah. talking about the Sway one, but it's not that one. It's the other one. Man, did you know that he released I'll a new album? I did. You know what? And as a Childish Gambino fan, this is another thing I feel bad that I haven't even listened to it. I have not even touched it on my spot. I saved it. I went. I was like, I'm going to save it. I'm going to listen to it later. I haven't had time to listen to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember I was on Rap Genius's website and they said that he's streaming it. It was like the week before it came out. So I listened to it. And I was like, yeah, oh, this is not that bad. This is actually pretty good. And oh, then, he's like, streaming? The next oh, week, it, yeah. And it was just like, if you went to the website, it was just going to be on a continuous stream. And then like, it would stop for like a minute and then play over again. Wow. And then I listened to it. I was just trying to find, it's so hard to know which song is which because he just time stamped it. And I was like, okay, yeah. that's great. That's great. That no, was another thing. I saw, the time. I saw the time stamps. I was like, okay. About just as bad as uh, 
Kendrick Untitled album. It's like, what's your favorite song? Untitled number four, I think. I don't remember. That's like, better than saying, what's your favorite song? Oh, it's uh, the 14 minute, 32 oh. second mark. <laughs> you know, that one. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Hang on. Let me see this. That's like, that's like a YouTube comment section. Because I definitely did save the album under my Childish Gambino. Oh, so the album's called, wait. The date, it? it's, it's called, just called 3 it's the date? 20. Oh, he did, no, he didn't. Wow. He did times, I see. That's, that's like crazy. Really going, that's like going to a comment section on YouTube when it's playing the whole album. It's like, just in case you didn't know what the track listing was, here's the song. Yeah, song. for real. And then they can just put the, <laughs> that's great. Okay, I feel like for anyone who's going to watch this, and they know both of us well, they're going to wonder when we're going to talk about Chon, which is now. Because you put me on the Chon. <laughs> you know, I need to know, how did you find Chon? And what, like, what did you think oh, when you first heard Chon? Okay, so I discovered, I'm, I have to use my phone. Like, I, as much as I like, as much like musical information that I know, Ironically, with like even with music history, I'm terrible at remembering people's years with their albums. So that's I'm gonna pull. That's actually my up. strength. That's like my. I know a lot of people who could do it, and I'm just like, yeah. I, I even I even prefaced that I'm just like, hey, this might be wrong, but I think this year, and they'll yeah. be like, no, I'm like, okay. So depends. <laughs> here it is. So Chan, first off, I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I have no memory on how I discovered Chan. And that's the crazy part because wow. Wow. no one no one told me about Sean. I think actually I think this is a possibility. This is like a memory. Memories are weird. Don't trust your memories. But I, I'm a huge fan of another band called Animals as Leaders, and they're a, uh, they're a heavy progressive instrumental three piece band. Um, and you know I was just listening to a lot of Animals as Leaders and like little like side bands off of them like Twenty intervals as bands in that prog like that prog area and then it branched off and i was on maybe spotify and a radio came on and i heard a song and i was like oh this is crazy and then i just heard guitars ripping and then drums just going and he's just doing all this cool stuff and then i didn't know what he was doing so i stopped everything and looked at my phone and said what is this band and i saw chime and i was like who who is this? And uh, they were playing, they were playing, Perfect Pillow. That was a song I listened to off their Girl album in 2015. So I heard this song in 2016, like so it was my sophomore year at West Georgia, probably like in the fall. So I heard this song and it was just like, yo, I have no idea like what the, actually it was 2017 because I was still a sophomore, but it was the spring semester. So I was listening to it. I was like, what is this band? So, of course, I looked up the entire album, and I was like, all right, this is dope. And then I looked at the previous album, Newborn Son, which is in 2013. And so I'm sitting here like, this is an amazing band. So I'm looking up everything I know about this band, because I've never heard this genre before. And they really introduced me to math rock, which I guess I introduced a lot of people to math rock, because they didn't know what that genre was. And then I just kept listening to it. And it just brought back a lot of memories of, like, playing, like, you know, like those Tony Hawk games and like all those like skateboarding. It just brought back, and I'm like, this is like music I would hear in those games, but like yeah, I can way see better. Now. Yeah, but like way better. And like, and <laughs> also at this time, besides being a musician, I was heavy into skateboarding and all the all that stuff when I was younger. At the same time, so I was a basic, I was your basic like black kid skateboarding all the time and listening to weird abstract music and like rap. So that was just me. And so I was like, okay, this band is awesome. Chan, looked them up, learned all their stuff about, like, all their stuff as I could about them, about the band, because they were still new. Like, Chan, I think their first album, their first EP, they actually released in either 2008 or 2009. Hang on, let me think. I'm the same age as the drummer, but the drummer's, like, barely younger than me. So he was, oh, I'm doing a lot of math right now. It'd be like that. I'm doing a lot of, <laughs> I'm doing a lot of math. The the drummer was basically 12 or 13. Nathan Camarena, he was like 12 or 13 when the band, when they released that EP. Oh. And like that EP, yeah, and that EP is only available on YouTube. It's called Across the uh, Across the Spectrum. That's crazy. Let me, yeah. So like he was 12 or 13. Oh, here we go. So. 
20, I cannot do math, <laughs> 2011. Oh, okay. 2011 is when they, 2011, 2010 is when they first released, hang on, because I'm still looking, like I have a lot of, I have a YouTube following them. Okay, we found it. We found it. 2008 <laughs> was when they made the songs and recorded them. The drummer mm-hmm. was 12. Because I'm, I'm, like I said, we're like the same age. So he was 12, and everyone else was like 14, 15. They released the album. They were they released the EP. They did that, and they did all that stuff. I don't really know how they started like getting into bigger album stuff, but yeah, yeah, and that's when it happened. And in that year, I was like, this is amazing. And then I saw that they were going to go on tour, and I was like, I should buy tickets, and I couldn't buy tickets, so I bought something to watch this live stream of them. And during the live stream. Most bands don't do this, but they were like, oh, yeah, we're on tour. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is what our tour is about. And it was their album tour, but they released the album halfway through the tour instead of releasing the album before the tour. But they were oh, playing wow. songs from the album, and then they were like, oh, yeah, this is the homie tour. And then they released the full album about, uh, I think, a couple weeks into the tour. Oh, um, okay. And that was in 2017. So Summer 17 was lit for me. <laughs> I just had a new album. I was like, this band is amazing. And then I just fell in love with them. And that yeah. style of music. I have no idea. How, I knew about Math Rock. So, because I knew about Yvette Young. So, when you oh, talk about Sean, Young. and I heard them, I was like, okay, I enjoy her, her and Covey. Like, I listened to a little bit of Covey, but not a lot. But I knew I enjoyed Same. Sean awesome. as soon as I heard it. And Homie is my favorite album, even though I heard it like, just last year. I think Sean's like actual album Sean came out. Yeah, it came out last year. It came out last so, like, year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't last summer it was, was wild. Yeah, I think it was you. I don't think it was Yeah, it had to have been you that told me about Sean. I was like, I don't know I do not know Sean is. It is wild because like I discovered Sean and like I would tell people and then they'll be like, Oh, I've never heard of this band and of course I'm just happy. But then slowly but surely, I started meeting more and more people who knew about Chan. And ironically, all the people who knew about Chan were like band kids. Like, like, and I was talking to J Ray because J Ray was just like, and someone else brought this up. They were just like, oh, yeah, if you're a drummer and you're in band, of course you listen to music like this. And I didn't think anything of it. Like, oh, it makes sense. I'm a drummer. I'm in band. Of course, I'm going to like music that has complex rhythms and complex melodies with different metric changes and different stylistic approaches. Of course, I'm going to like that, you know? Yeah, surprisingly, I do like that kind of stuff, even though like I did not care before I got into college about any of that stuff. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Like I said, like I, I was listening to, like the metal I listened to before I got to college, I was listening to like metal bands. Like if I listened to metal, it was like Metallica, Black Sabbath, uh, Slayer, like either death metal or like classic. So when I heard that they were like calmer versions of metal, I was like, oh, this is awesome. You know, like prog metal, oh, and prog yeah. core, metal core, all that stuff like that. I mean, also listen to like all the, I guess you can say the goth emo stuff. Cause eh, I just like music, but um, yeah. dang, what was I about to say? It was about Tron. Maybe it was about Tron. I don't remember. Oh, uh, see, now I can't think because, oh, ba- oh, the first time I heard somebody else, somebody aside from like a person I told about, John, I was uh, actually, I was at a mini camp when I was doing drum corps. I was laying on my, uh, I was laying on my sleeping bag. We just got out the showers, you know, so I'm just showing there lights out. It's not happening yet. And the, the sousaphones or the, the, the contras, they walked in and their section leader, like, some of the section leaders carry around speakers and just have them blasting, whatever, blasting music. So he yeah. walked through and all of a sudden I heard like a guitar ripping and I was just like, oh, yo, I hear that, that's that's Plenty, I love Plenty. And they're just like, oh, you like Plenty too? And I'm like, yeah. And all of a sudden it shuffled to Perfect Pillow by Chan. And all I heard was the dan, 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 and just looked and was like shocked. And they were like, do you like Chan too? And I'm like, how do you know about Chan? Wait, like it the- was. Wait, you said Plenty? Like the group Plenty? Yeah, first the first song was like was a song by Plenty. I think I heard Plenty. Like I don't know how. But Yo, you probably you definitely have. If you listen to Yvette Young, I swear every like Spotify or like playlist, it'll be like, listen to some of this Yvette Young. It's like COVID. Yeah. And then it goes to it might play some stuff by Polyphia. If you hear stuff by Polyphia, it'll go to Interval and then Plenty, because they're all yes. like in the same. 
all of them. And I was like, I yeah. kept adding them to like some playlist I have. It's from yeah, my work. All, crazy. Like I have a playlist at work and it had a lot of Chon at first. And just, I kept seeing on my suggestions, I was like plenty interval. And I was like, I kept looking at like the songs and stuff like that. I was like, oh, this is definitely like Chon and stuff like that. So I kept pressing yeah. add, add, add. So like they're on there. I just haven't listened to them yet. I definitely got to, whenever we go back to school, and you get back in the gym. I got to go work out in the gym every day. Because if you're there and there's some Chon playing, I'll be able to just get a good workout. That's crazy. That's how Matt knows I'm in the gym. Because we're cause <laughs> I, cause I work at Functional, so it's in the back gym. So I'll be playing basketball. So I'm like, oh, I see Matt, but he doesn't see me. Let me play oh, some so Chon. Start, and then just start playing some Chon. That's exactly how he knows. Oh, like, he'll look oh. up and go, hey, that's come on. That's wild. Chon, yeah, Chon is definitely, like, one of, like, I, I try not to make them overrated, and I'm glad that they're able to, like, to stand up to their status, because, like, in interviews, they're super chill dudes, like, they're really cool guys, but, like, their musical mind works so crazy, and they don't really explain how it works, like, how their minds work, they're just like, oh, yeah, so if I do this, and they just rip something, and you're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's crazy. And hopefully next year, because their pattern has been releasing a new album every two years, hopefully in 2021, we'll see another Chon album. So, oh, yeah. hopefully. That's what I'm hoping for Tyler, to, Tyler the Creator also. Because I know he did that same oh. thing too. Does it every yes, two years. I'm actually excited to see what Tyler has after Igor. Yeah. It took me a second. Cause I, was like, I was like, okay, this is alright. And then I listened to it again. I was like, you know what? Igor is pretty good. Yeah, like, Igor, I, it I took like a, the fact that he took a while. Yeah, it takes a minute, and it took. I had to accept the fact, like, okay, he's not, he's not the best singer, but it's like, like, and you can be like, he should actually try, but it's like, you know what? I yeah, I appreciate the fact that he's not trying. He's kind of like, yeah, let me actually just sing the sing and see how it goes. Yeah, and that's what he does. He even says all the time, like, I'm not a good singer, and it's just like. I heard him on his uh, his Tiny Desk concert. He was singing something. He actually sounded good. I was like, yo, you, you yeah. can sing. You just, yeah, he's just, he's not trying to sing, you know, so. Yeah, it's, it's not like he's tone deaf. He's definitely not tone deaf. But. Yeah, he's not tone deaf at all. He can he can hear, yeah. but he can definitely hear. What do you think of uh, Pharrell? Because, like, Pharrell? I listened to his, yeah, I listened to his interview with like, Rick Rubin, and I was like, you know what? Like, I always appreciate, like, how he made music and some of his stuff. Like, I've always enjoyed some of the beats he's made. And then yeah. when I hear him talk, it's like, okay, this man's thinking on, a, like, a different level in terms of, like, how he sees music and stuff like that, which I, like, really think is awesome. So I just wanted to see your opinion on Pharrell. I think Pharrell is interesting because like, I know off the back, like, he doesn't he have, like, synesthesia or something? Like, yeah, he, like, where he can see sounds. Like Yeah, he can, like, see, like, the color. colors. Yeah. So like the first the first thing when I heard when I heard that he that happened, I was like, oh, that explains a lot of his music because a lot of his music is different, but you know it's Pharrell. Yeah. And I definitely like I definitely need to another artist I should listen to a lot more. But I like Pharrell. Um, I really do like Pharrell a lot. Uh, he <laughs> what year was it? He made like a he made like a huge like comeback. I wouldn't even say a comeback. It was just like the year of Pharrell. It was like, like 2013, 14, like when he dropped Happy, and then like he was just yeah. on everything. And I was like, Yeah, he dropped oh, Happy, really? and then he was like being featured on like everybody's song. Um, <laughs> my biggest surprise when he was featured on um, when he was featured on uh, Lil Uzi's song Neon Guts. That's my favorite Lil Uzi song. <laughs> like, because we're loving because we're loving Love Is Rage Two came out. I was like, Yeah, because like I'm a, I, I like Uzi. I definitely like Uzi. It took me a while to get into him. Um, mm -hmm. But like after Love Is Rage came out and I heard Twenty Minutes like everybody else, I was like, yep. "Okay." And then Pharrell was on the feature. I was like, "Is this Pharrell? Oh my god!" You know. <laughs> and you know what's weird is like, if he's on, if he's featured in the song, he's more than likely made the beat. And it's like, yeah, yep, he definitely made this beat. Like I thought that mm -hmm. when I heard Neon Guts and when I heard Twilight on Ventura, that's like, yes. as soon as I heard those beats, I was like, "Yo, that's my favorite song on there." And I was like, yeah, this is a Pharrell beat. You can't tell me who else made this beat. You can't. You yeah. cannot tell me. 
Yeah. Like, I, I know, was, I know it. He was on, what was it, like, is it Got the O's by Tyler the Creator? I think that's it. And that was, like, the yes. first time I've ever, I mean, it's probably not the only time, but it's, like, that's one of the few times I've heard him on a beat that's not one that he made, because I can tell that's Tyler's music. Let's see. Got them O's was on Cherry Bomb, right? Yeah, I just want to make sure the name was right. Let's see. Uh, yep, yep, it was Pharrell. Yep. Yeah, I remember I heard that verse. I was like, "That's not Tyler," and I was like, "Oh, that's Pharrell." Definitely. Wow. I'm just looking at Cherry Bomb, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, there was a, there was a lot." Nice, but yeah, yeah, Pharrell is definitely uh, an art. I, I respect Pharrell a lot. Haven't haven't heard a bad song from him yet. I mean, I'll probably like if I go through and listen to everything, I'll we'll find that one song I'm like, eh. But I really yeah. feel like you can't judge a artist that much on his old stuff when he has newer stuff because the newer stuff kind of either like validates his newer sound or it validates the sound he didn't find then, but now he has it now. Yeah. Something like that. The craziest thing is, like, people may not know that much Pharrell or, like, Timbaland music, but the thing is, everyone knows oh, their Tim- music by one person, and that's Justin Timberlake. Of course. And that's of course. crazy. Cause, like, yeah. Yeah. I listened to Ju- Justified, his first album. Yeah, Justified. And I was like, yep, the Neptunes made this one. Yep, Timbaland made this one. Like, you can tell who yep. made which song. People, yeah, people have to realize, like, a strong, I, I, I dare say, I'll, I'll give a strong 40% of Justin Timberlake's, like, musical, like, his, like, backbone of his career, Pharrell, Pharrell's beats. Yes. But that's probably too much. I don't know. I just know a lot of Pharrell. I, I knew Pharrell more of, like, I thought he was just the DJ. I thought he was just the producer when I first uh, found out about him, honestly. I didn't know that he actually, like, I didn't really know that he made his own songs or, like, made songs that he sung on. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember, because I was making, when I first started making beats, I started listening to everybody that I, because anyone, because I was reading the hip-hop, and I was like, when people said such and such is, like, the best rapper or such and such is the best producer, I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Let me see why. And, like, I didn't yeah. listen to old Pharrell stuff. But that was around the time Girl came out, which was 2014. And I remember I listened to the album, I was like, okay, yeah. Pharrell's like really, really good at what he yeah. does. And I didn't know this until I heard like it. But apparently like the Neptunes produced like over half of like the top 100 songs in like 2003 or some year. Oh, day. Yeah. I didn't, like, well, that's still a lot. Yeah. That, yeah. That's like great. if you heard a single out there, it was more than likely produced by him and Chad. I was like, okay. All right, yeah. So, <laughs> all right, man, man's out here grinding, for real. For real. Ironically, oh. one of the beats they made was grinding for the clips. Oh, which uh, is my least favorite beat I've ever heard. Really? Yes. I don't know why. Actually, you know what my least favorite beat is? Is dirt off your shoulder. I don't like that beat at all. <laughs> I just thought about it. I was like, oh, man. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> like, it's not hey. bad. I was just like... It's not bad. It's okay. It was weird. It's a Timbaland beat. And I was like... Yeah, it sounds like a Timbaland beat, but I was like... Yeah, like, I feel like only Jay-Z could have done that. Like, only Jay-Z could have made it sound good. Not many people could have. Not many people could. And, yeah. that's, and that's something. That's something to say about Jay-Z. <laughs> yeah. It's no knock to Timberland, but it was just like, it was, I've heard better beats. And it happens. It, be, it really be like that. It really do. Okay. I got to ask you this question because I was like, I got to ask someone on here who's a percussionist because there are people who are in percussion who like yeah. it. And then there are people are like me who are in percussion mm-hmm. who just don't get it. I feel like you know where I'm going from with this. What? is so interesting and what's like so i wouldn't say like what's so good about it but I like what what do you like so much about dci's oh about dci mm-hmm. oh man 
Um, I'm trying to think. I have to separate it from being, from being the the kid who watched it to growing up and becoming the kid who actually participated in it. Because like those are two those those are two different entire like worldviews. From watching it, I don't know because like because you, know, you know people grow up in two different styles. Either you're doing traditional core style or you're doing shelf style, mm-hmm. and Unfortunately, I say unfortunately because I believe as a percussionist, you need to be at least knowledgeable of everything. I'm not knowledgeable at all that much on show style, you know. Like I've I've seen I've seen thousands of HBCU bands and been a part of the culture of that for a long time to where I get it now. But I never personally played in a show style band. I grew up in a four style traditional band, and just like DCI, DCI is just like that professional it's like that nfl level for those kids in marching band you know when they oh, see that they're just like oh my god hey, well, that's the thing that gets you because like people put on all these huge productions like the storylines look good the beats like if you're a drummer the beats are solid like you're like dang that's really clean that's really nice you guys look good and you're doing cool stuff at the same time like it's just like the intensity of the performing i really feel like that's really it it's just like the performing and like the the music and the story all together is what like gets people who watch a DCI like to fall in love with it. They're just like, oh, that looks amazing, you know? Because I, I I've been watching DCI. I didn't know what DCI was until I was a freshman. I was a freshman in high school. Some people find out about it super early. I didn't know it existed until I was a freshman because our marching band show in twenty. Uh, in 2012, so oh, actually, I was a sophomore, but I found I watched videos before. But in 2012, we stole, we stole choreography for uh, I think it was Blue Devils. They did some cool like weird breakdown thing and like dance, and we did that same dance too. Well, the band did that dance because I was on bass drum this time when we were having our uh, when we had our drum break thing. So like. That was cool, and I was like, "Oh, DCI is amazing!" And then I'm always like, "I wanted to be a part of it, but I never knew how to be a part of it." You know, I get into college, and I'm like, "DCI is great, DCI is great." And then I finally had the opportunity to go and perform, and performing in it is absolutely just like it's crazy. Because if I tell you how my experience went day by day, you'll be like, "Oh my god, are you crazy? Why would you spend twenty seven hundred dollars to almost barely eat every day? You're in the sun for." 10 to 12 hours a day you have to shower with other people you have to eat at a certain time you have to go to bed at a certain time wake up at a certain time like 7 a.m every day rinse and repeat constantly and perform for a bunch of random high schoolers and it's just like that just sounds like it sounds like crap but like being, like football. Being, it sounds like football it really like it's crazy because like that's and that's that's just the thing it's a very physical mental game and what I like, I, I like performing. And for people who like to perform, being in DCI gets your performance high so, like, it, it gets to a point where you're just like, wow, I feel on top of the world. Like, the, I remember my very first time pushing my drum kit out and, like, not even playing in front of, like, a real audience. It was, like, a, like a, like a family and friends thing. And, like, I felt amazing. Like, with the uniform on, everything was, like, great. And then my first actual DCI performance, me walking around in the lot with other DCI groups. Because, like, if you're a top group, you know, I mean, I don't fanboy and fangirl over it anymore. But, like, when you're in high school, you see someone from, like, Crown or Cavaliers or Boston or Coates, you're just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. They're amazing because, like, you know, they're the best. They're the best at what they do. They spend mm-hmm. hours a day getting beat up playing, and you think they're rock stars. So, like, being there – in your uniform, walking around, even though I was in an open class group, I was still a part of DCI. And people who don't do DCI or do DCI still respect other DCI performers in some capacity. Mm. And then, you know, I, it just feels like I, I really love being in my suit. It felt like a superhero. It was like, all right, time to get my super suit on and go play drum set and blow a bunch of people's minds. And, you know, it's just like that, that, that feel, that entertainment of those people are there to see you. Every DCI show you go to, people pay money to be there. So they're paying yeah. money to, yeah, they're paying money to see you. So they want to see something good. And you're also competing. It's not like, you know, how we do in college band, how we'll just go to an exhibition, you know, or even in high school band, where like you're competing. Yeah, you're competing for a prize. But like, 
you're in high school, it's like I'm competing with like a bunch of different high schools who can be amazingly like way better than me. And like, you know, typically it's just like, oh, that high school is just historically better than me. So I'm not going to win. In DCI, it's like, nah, like every year you got to bring something different. There is no there are no placements hold. You got to compete your butt off and do what you can throughout the whole season until you get to Lucas Oil, Lucas Oil Stadium in uh, Indianapolis and you do your last show. But like, oh, you know. That that's just it. I've always been I've always been a fan of BCI, and then when I got the chance to perform, I was even more like you know, like this is great. Oh yeah, okay, I see. Because I was like I, people always like talk about it, so I was like, but I never had any interest in seeing it. And then yeah. I was like, do people even care about DCI? And I see people at events, and there's thousands of people, and I'm like. Oof. Okay, so people do like yeah. actually like it. And I'm like, this is not just like your friends and family. Like these are, like people who like like yeah, I go to see these specific things. Yeah, and and that's really cool that you get to do something like that. And like especially like when you said like, why would you go out for hours on the end just to do that? I'm like, cause I thought about it for like a while, like the last semester. I was like, man, like, maybe I should do a DCI one day. And I was like, but do I really want to do a DCI? And, um, yeah, but cause I wanted to see someone's perspective because I've asked, I've never asked anyone really why they like DCI. So that was like really cool to know like why. It's so, it's yeah it's it's crazy you know it, it it is it's a very it's a mentally and physically challenging thing. Like you didn't see me, but like before my DCI season, I have a picture somewhere. But like I lost twenty seven pounds due to just physical like me lifting equipment all summer, me working out. They they don't have you on a strict diet. But they give you like food that, you know, is good for like a person who's going to be out in their heat. You have your carbs, your fruits, your veggies. They might bring you sweets every so often. You know, you're either mm-hmm. drinking water or you're drinking this stuff called squincher. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask anybody in drum corps. Squincher is like the goat. It's it's like one of those drinks you only get when you're in drum corps, which is weird. But it's basically like off-brand Gatorade. <laughs> oh, OK. I was like, what is it's this? It's off-brand Gatorade. But like yeah, it's and it's just a it's just a mental thing because even with me playing drum kit, like there were days where like I wanted to quit. I kept hitting a mental wall, like I'm not getting any better. Techs are yelling at me, and as a drum set player, I was responsible for keeping the front ensemble in time. And not only was I in charge of keeping the front ensemble in time, I was in charge of listening to the actively moving drum line who are yards behind me, making sure I'm in time with them. Because if they look up at the drum major, the drum major is what is she's conducting. They're looking at her. She's looking at them. They're when they get close, they're listening for me. And when they listen to me, I have to listen to them. And then the, my center marimba is listening to me. So I'm literally the glue that's keeping the front, the front ensemble and the drum line together. So like I was in a very mentally like taxing, like position personally as as a rookie, drum set player in DCI, and also as a I, I would say a well seasoned music major because like I'm used to a different listening environment, you know, mm-hmm. and like playing quads here. Like I, I was center for the quad line here in 2016, and like I've never been outside anything until last year. And so being center for drums, like being the drum set player, I was used to that, but I wasn't used to the responsibility of being in the front ensemble and listening to the front end. The, so it's it's a lot. It's mentally yeah. draining and mentally taxing, and you'll want to quit. But it's just like if you can find that resolve to like this is what I want to do, this is why I want to do it, then you know you got it. And I think everyone should at least attempt to do DCI or at least go to a DCI camp because if you don't make it, you learn so much. <laughs> like I auditioned mm-hmm. for indoor, which I wish I had more years of indoor. I auditioned for indoor at Equinox first on drum kit, and then I went and auditioned on quads. And like I got cut on quads, but like me going to those like two days i learned so much about quad technique and my quad playing got even better so i was able to take that personally but i think everyone should at least if they have the opportunity go to a camp or do something before they age out okay yeah give me one second hold on you're good the light yeah the sun's going i'm making sure that my light stay on stays on yeah i was like everyone's seeing this man so clearly and i was like he's also like on his ipad i'm on like my lenovo and i was like yeah (laughs) You know, Apple, they got some pretty good quality. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, never mind. That's still good. Hey, oh, yeah. yeah, man. DCI is great. It's fun. Yeah. And 
I know, I think it's like for Equinox, I know you couldn't do it anymore because you aged out. Is there any DCLs that you can do now? Or like, it's like, have you reached the limit? Like, you can't go past like 22 or something like that for everything. So, yeah, so like for Drum Corps, the age out is 21, um, which is being exempted now because of all this COVID-19 stuff. So all the people who are going to march this year gets an extra year. And then everyone who's in indoor, the age out for indoor is 22. So uh, Hannah, she was in the middle of her season. Her, uh, her and my uh, friend Alex, they're both 22 now. Um, but since the season literally got cut right in half, um, they're going to be able to get a bonus year, which is rare. But it's, you know, so. Which is um, good too, yeah. Yeah, which is really good. So there's, so with that, because you have this WGI, which has its own stuff for percussion and guard, different levels. In DCI, you have open class, world class, which both age out at the same time. There's another band entity entity <laughs> called uh, DCA, Drum Corps Associates, oh, and wow. that is all age. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can join it at however, I think the youngest, I think the, the minimum is 14. You can be 14 joining that. Uh, same with DCI with uh, open class, you can be 14. And then it's 16 with world, I think. They might have changed it. I don't know. But yeah, DCA, you can join at any age and you can be in it for however long and there's no you know it's a it's a senior core that's meant to like help young kids who want to get experience some sort of core experience before going out to a dci group and it's also meant for those like me who feel like you know i can still march i still like to march i still want to do this activity and we can go in and do it. Or for any like a super older person who's like, I just want to do something for fun to stay in shape. Mm -hmm. You know? Would you consider so doing it? That's pretty cool. Um, actually, yeah, definitely. I actually I auditioned this past year for Atlanta C V. Uh mm -hmm. I auditioned for quads, but I was running out of a lot of time because I made a time commitment to be a front ensemble tech for Equinox. Because, like, oh, okay. um, the, the front ensemble instructor, well, the front caption head is the caption head now with a tech last year. He knew that he was going to be caption head. And he was just like, I, I, I was just talking with him about stuff. And, you know, later on down the road, I asked him, I was like, hey, is there any way that I can, like, help the organization out in any way possible? Like, I, you know, in any way possible. And he, he asked me, he was like, would you like to be a rack tech for me? And I was like, yes, absolutely. I Because, I, you know, the one thing I picked up from DCI and WGI is once I age out, because I did DCI when I was 21. So that was my first and only year that I can do it. Same with indoor. I only I was one and done. The best thing they told me is to give back to the program. And I was just like, give back to the organization. I was like, well, that makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a music educator. So even if I don't become a band director in some way, I'll have an education degree. So this is like basically like an internship. It's helping me out and I'm gaining experience and I'm helping out people. So I made so much time commitment to that. Being on the weekends in CV, I ran out of time and I learned 85% of the packet, which isn't recommended. But, you know, I was in the quad room doing whatever. I couldn't keep up. I was like, hey, can I go do this? Because they saw that I played drum set for a DCI group. And then I went and auditioned for drum kit. I didn't really know everything, but I kind of showed up like day one and the other two people were in there for like two months. So they chose the other dude, which is entirely fine. I was just like, you know, that's fine because I have a commitment with Equinox. But depending on how life goes, I'm probably going to audition for like this well, audition this year for next summer. Because I definitely want to keep playing and I'm probably not going to march quads because four years of marching quads, my back hurts. <laughs> Oh, yeah. My knees hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's why Brandon's not doing quads no more. Yeah, Brandon. And Brandon's younger than me. He's younger than you. Yes. <laughs> he was like, I'm old. old. I'm like, bro, what? Like, but he's been doing it for like seven years. Yeah, he has been. I didn't march quads in high school. I marched bass drum and snare. Um, yeah, I've only marched bass drum, so lucky me, I guess. Shoot, I wish I was a bass drum. I, I thought about auditioning for bass at CV, but I was like, nah. I'm actually going to probably audition for marimba because i've never played mallets in uh like in any type of ensemble i was never in pit in high school and we don't have a pit here all of my mallet experience comes from mrs bird and like playing a wind ensemble and like concert experience so it'd be nice to like play with the drum corps on mallets mm -hmm. so that's probably what i'm gonna do wait is atlanta cv all ages yeah interesting interesting yeah <laughs> It is, it is. It. You got, bro, there's people, you got some, you got people from your high school. 
for yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, like killing Ethan, it in CV. And was it yeah, Ethan? Was Nathan? Ethan in it? and Nathan. 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 Yeah, Nathan. Yeah, uh, Nathan was in it. Okay, I can tell. He played quads. He played quads last year. Of course. Ethan, Nathan, and Elijah. Elijah was base three, I think, and now he's going to be base oh, okay. two. I don't remember. Or he was going to okay. be before they canceled everything. Oh, okay. And there were everybody. some other front kids, but I don't know if they were there when you were there. They're pretty young. Like they were, they were. I think they were like ninth, tenth graders when I was teaching them. And I think you were already here at West George. I'm pretty sure that was your freshman graders, year. There were tenth graders. Then wait, was it my freshman year? Like last spring? Last spring? Yeah, yeah, last spring. Well, technically last, like in 2018 in the fall. So you weren't in the, you weren't here yet. I don't think, or you weren't okay. in the pro. I would, I, I would probably know a few tenth graders. And okay. I may know like one. I would have known one or two ninth graders at that time. I now, think his I name. Know who's in there? Taylor. Taylor Burton. Taylor. Maybe he 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 was in the audition room when I went to go audition. He was on Vibes. So. Yep, I know that Taylor. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. there was there was a handful. Of, yeah, there's a handful of Hiram High kids there. Because you yeah. know, uh, CV rehearses at Hiram. So. Yeah, I used to see that truck every day. At school, I'm like, yeah, 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 bro. You just walked out and like, huh? Atlanta TV, okay. Yeah, because I I think I knew, I knew Ethan was in it, and I was like, okay, I guess they practice here, but I never thought of anything else about it. Like I was never like one to, because a lot of people never said, oh come on, you should do Atlanta TV. Like no one ever said that until college. So I was like, maybe I should do it, maybe not. I don't know. Hey man, I, re- I definitely recommend it. If, even if you never um, get the chance to do DCI, because DCI is expensive, very expensive. That was my main reason for not doing it earlier, because of money. Because I wanted to do Spirit of Atlanta when mm-hmm. I was uh, 18, but those fees were like $3,200, $3,500 with payment plans. Yeah. And then Southwind was $2,700, but I was able to pay off for it by fundraising at the school, uh, fundraising at the school donations through GoFundMe, and then I wrote a paper for a Southwest scholarship, and they gave me $1,500. Not bad. Nice. Yeah, so I had, but yeah, these, DCI can get expensive, but if you do CV, I, I recommend doing CV. So those people, the staff there are great. Instructional okay. staff, they have some, yeah. And they'll make it fun. And it's cool, because like, they're used to seeing kids, so when you go in there and you're like older, they're just like, oh, hey, and you're just like, what's up? And they, they try to tell you something, and you nail it on the first try, and they're just like, Okay, he's uh okay, cool. I think he's got something. You know, yeah, they 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 get really excited to see um, they get really excited to see kids, and when they see like people who come in who are already talented, they get very happy with that and see how far they can push you on day one. Because they definitely tried to push me on day one. I put the quads on, and they were like, "Go!" I was like, "What?" Ah. Oh so, man, my main goal honestly is just to make snare line here at, at UWG, but like. My chops, like I went. Uh, I just, I just don't practice enough. I probably should practice more. I definitely should practice more. <laughs> that, that's what Mrs. Bird would say. Anytime I, anytime I go to her, hey, can I do this? Yeah. Are you practicing? I'm just like, about that. <laughs> about that. Yeah. Well, I get. Yeah. No, I get it to you, man. Anything that Mrs. Bird says to you, and you practice with, like, if you play with her, you'll make the snare line because she made. Um, she, I, I drum with her a little bit. Because she was like, yeah, let's just play all this stuff. And I'm just drumming. And I'm starting to get to my limit. But she's also starting to get to her limit, too. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's keep drumming. And we just keep drumming. And she, she, she'll, make you a be- she'll make you a better drummer. She'll give you the tools you need to be a better drummer. And she helped my traditional chops get better. Because I haven't played snare since my senior year of high school. I came here and I played quads. And I love playing quads. I was like, I'm a quad drummer now. And then she was like, you want to be on the snare line this year? And I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> Oh, man, I love I remember traditional that grip. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you remember that? Yeah, she kept bugging me. Yes, and I made a joke at the it. end of the trials. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was like, because every time she was, I was like, "So you want to go play snare?" I'm like, "No, I'm gonna go play snare." No, I get my quad set up. I'm literally in the center. It's like me, and it's like me, Brennan and Ryan and Kale and Bryston, and I was just like. You yeah, haven't been on a five man quad line in four years. Let's get it. And then Justin's about to click us off, and Mrs. Bird walks over and it's just like, So, can any of you guys play traditional? I'm like, Go away. Please. <laughs> Please. Oh, 
I love that woman though. She, but she did help me get, uh, become a better stair drummer throughout the whole season. Cause she always walked over to me. She'll be like, "Your taps down." I'm like, "Gotcha." Like right in the middle of rehearsal, she'll run up to me. Hey, your taps are a little high. I know. <laughs> I got it. It's funny, it's funny when she asks someone something because she's kind of like when she asks, "Man, if she ever sees this, I, oof. I'm gonna say what I say very carefully." <laughs> it's like having like, a little sister who wants to ask you something like a favor. It's like. Yeah, you want to say no, but it's like, oh, that's my little sister. So, yeah, and like, but she's so nice about it. It's like you can't go like, okay, yeah, sure. No, you won't. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. that's like the only way I could yeah. describe Miss Bird. <laughs> like when she asks you for something, because it's kind of like she says it, but she says it nice. So it's like you can't really go, no. Oh but, yeah, like no, unless yeah. you like, no, I really actually can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've definitely, I've definitely told her no plenty of times, and she's like, "Can you do this?" I'm like, "No, I can't," but I'm gonna do it because you're telling me to do it. Yeah, or it's like you just say no, and she's like, "Can you at least try?" I'm like, yeah, you're just you're, like, so it's like there's no such thing as no, <laughs> unless it's like really a no, or like actual no. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I, I enjoy Miss Bird. She's like one of the best percussion instructors I've ever had. Oh yeah, no, hands down, hands down. Yeah. Oh man. It was so crazy actually seeing Dr. Bird helping us out with percussion. I was like, okay, I knew you could play it. I knew you knew what you were doing, but you act like you know what you're doing. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, that is a he. He is a man that has 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 plenty of information on the marching percussion. Um, because you know he marched on UGA's drumline for years. Uh, mm-hmm. The quad line. He was drum major, uh, and he's taught several drum lines, like several written for several drum lines. He also judged. I don't know how many times he's judged, but I mean, he judges a bunch of high school band competitions. He's done that, but he judged uh, Jeepa, the Jeepa finals for indoor. He judged that in twenty, I think twenty seventeen. He was on the panel of judges for indoor, so you know, yeah, man, he he has his fair share of knowledge for marching. Yeah, definitely. That is like, I just remember that day that we were all in there, and it's like they act so much the same, but they're kind of different when they do their methods of teaching. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, like because like I wouldn't say he's not. It, it's funny because like he'll joke around until like you keep messing up one part over and over and over again yeah, and just over. like anyone else yeah. would but it's like he's like do that again wait no yeah. guys do it again and it's like Whoa, yeah. Okay, yeah he's very yeah no very very cutthroat uh very cutthroat style of teaching a drum line which is what I, i'm fine with i'm used to that personally because like i said like, i've had a lot of techs in southwind who were like that very <laughs> cutthroat but like mm-hmm. He's still nice about it. And, like, I'm used to it because when I first started playing quads, like, that was my first time playing quads. And Dr. Bird would, like, he, he used to come to marching band rehearsals actually kind of often. And he would give me, like, side quad lessons. And, like, I would ask him, like, is there any possible way you could, like, help me out? And he came to the studio a couple of times. I brought a quad pad. And he would teach me different sweep techniques and how to get better at sweeping. So, like, I, I, I've, been taught, I've been taught by Dr. Bird a handful of times. So I was used to that. So we can, when I was excited when he was coming to uh, marching rehearsal for us, I was so excited. Yeah, he was saw me on snare for the first time <laughs> ever. Won me audition on snare, but like that was like the last time he saw me play snare drum. It was my oh, freshman yeah. year during that one day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we got a lot done that day too. I remember that we had a, we just got like a lot done. So much, which I'm not yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm also not surprised whenever I'm in percussion, like when marching percussion, because like it's just easy. Because even though Miss Bird's like the best instructor I've had, like I've had like my other two, they've been good too. So it's like our per like the drum line's never been bad. So like we always yeah. get stuff done quickly. So yeah, that's nothing new. It's just like the energy, and, like the different vibe is different. Oh yeah, no, I will say that for sure. My my the vibe the vibe in high school was like I, I was just used to like how do I say it? I was used to like 
the drum line was like, yeah, we're all a section, we're all a family, like we're all in high school together. And like the vibe was like a certain like set of this, but in college, there's so many different personalities. Like even in high school, it's different. But in college, there's so many different personalities. People come from so many different backgrounds that it's really hard to keep up the same energy day to day, rehearsal to rehearsal, keep up that same vibe. But some days I'd come in like, I'm not here. I'm not here right now. Like life is kicking my butt. Like I'm like definitely not here. My job stressing me out, this, this, and that, and the other. I'm just here to play these drums and get going. Like I'm sad. And other days I come in with like crackhead energy through the roof and I'm like throwing the snare drum, <laughs> like, let's go. Like, you know. And that's like in that in those ranges of, and that can happen to like everybody. Like that can happen to literally everybody. You know, seeing Chris Bell in a bad mood at a marching band rehearsal, that's like Whoa, dude, you good? Will you be good? You know? Will you be good? Yeah. The only person I don't think I've ever seen like in a bad mood is Drake. Drake, Drake Drake's overall mood is just I'm here. I'm here, accept it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't know real. what's gonna happen. I've never oh. seen Drake in a bad mood. I've never well I mean, I've seen Kelsey in a bad mood, but she wouldn't openly say it. Of course, I've seen Hannah in a bad mood. Chris, yeah. I've seen I've seen a lot of people on the drum line in bad moods, except for I can say Drake. I can also say Alex. Yeah, I can say that. I could say mm, maybe Isaac. I don't think he was ever in a bad mood during my Isaac? season. Yeah, I've never seen like, I, like I'll see him and like I'll ask him how he's doing. He'll tell me like, oh, I'm not doing well, but like he wouldn't be in like a obvious like a person who gives off his emotions like me <laughs> with my face and my like oh yeah being <laughs> probably say josh josh yes he's, yeah josh keeps himself i can tell when he's in a bad mood because he's a lot he, he's already quiet because he was trying to get used to meeting everybody um mm -hmm. new another <laughs> marching band vet who he hadn't been there since 2016 but um yeah, he just keeps quiet to himself, and if he yeah. is in a bad mood, he won't tell you. You just gotta go up to him, be like, "Hey, how you doing?" And he'll tell you. And it's like, "Whoa." Yeah. Also, I take Matt when he's there. Yeah. Oh, hey, Tom. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. Yeah, cause like when he's there, <laughs> because he was he's so chill that you could just like he was just nonchalant with his attitude that you couldn't tell. Yeah. Well, I remember one time, I think he came in late, but he came in so late. Like, he came in like I know an rehearsal. hour late. I know what the rehearsal was talking about, too. He came in like stupidly late, and I just looked at him because he's Hannah. he was Hannah's uh, symbol partner. So, like, the whole time she's either just hitting the air or, like, Drake would, like, hold his symbol over for her to hit, too. And he showed up, and we're just like, where where were you? Yeah, he, and was he, he asleep? He tried to play it off like, hey, what are you talking about? I've been here the whole time. I'm like, was, was was he asleep or like? No, I don't think that I don't know if that was the day he was asleep or if he was out of town because his mom was like, like the doctor. I, re yeah, I remember that one was the doctor and one was like he was asleep. Yeah, that may have been the day that he was asleep. And I remember that, and he was like, "If anyone asks, I've been here the whole time." But he's like, "Miss Bird asked, I've been here the whole time." Like, but she and then ten minutes later she walked up, Matt. No slippers. <laughs> nice of you to join us. She never called him Matt. Oh my gosh. I think she called him Matt like twice. That's what he gets. You don't wear Nike slides to Marchie Bear. That's exactly. how you get nicknames. And she would look at everyone. She'd look at all the symbols in the face. She'd say, Chris, Drake, Katie, slippers. I was like, yeah, she just. Yeah, says, says, says all their names perfectly fine. And then slippers. Yeah. Only two people I've ever heard her call them by their nicknames. And that's him and Tyler. She always called them Spats. I've never heard her call them Tyler. Yeah. Like, except for a few occasions. She called me, she called Kelsey by her nickname a lot. She still calls her by her nickname a lot occasionally. Yeah, I heard it a lot more towards the end, like in October. She was like Skipper. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Who? I heard Skipper, and I really thought the Skipper. For, I didn't know. I was like, why is she calling you the Penguin? The Penguins in Madagascar. I know, right? At least be cool. Also. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta bring the heat. Exactly. You gotta bring. <laughs> I was Man. so confused. I remember that, and she told me, she was like, my dream job was to be a skipper at Disney World. And I was like, I just, I didn't even know how to react to that. I was like, people got dreams, fam. Exactly. People got dreams. I'm not mad. Yeah, I'm not mad about I'm that. Not. Like, I didn't even know what a skipper was until you said that. And I'm like, okay. 
What? There you go. I'm trying to think. Okay. I have, I have like one more question. I was like, I couldn't, cause I couldn't think of anything else. Okay. So you're a music education major, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any desire to do like composition or composing for other places? Uh, honestly, yeah. Cause I mean, cause I, I, I started dabbling in like making my own pieces sophomore year. Uh, mm -hmm. when I wanted, I decided I'm like, I want to be a double major. And I was like, I didn't know if I want to be a double major for adding performance or adding comp. And I didn't trust myself and my ability to finish a piece. Cause I actually, I've written, I've written seven or eight pieces. They're all unfinished except for one. It was supposed to be a three movement piano piece. I actually finished that. I have one full piece. It's a, you know, I guess it's a piano piece and it's short. It's like, minute and a half two minutes you know but i just didn't believe in myself as a composer because it took me so long to finish that one movement and then i tried writing percussion pieces that i never finished i tried writing i have a string trio that's i don't even know where it's going i, I just wrote it just to write it because i like listening to string music the string quartets and oh, yeah. stuff like that but you know and as i'm getting more into like being a drum line instructor I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to get hired somewhere and they're going to be like, can you write the battery book? And, you know, of course, since it's, it's my, it's my, my drum line and I know the kids, I would personally prefer to write the battery book. So I'm going to have to like learn how, I mean, I do, I have a book now, like I have like a stock audition book I can give to kids if a director ever asked me, but like mm -hmm. I had to get used to like making my own music. And so I, I do it. I practice it as much as I can. And I do have a desire to compose and stuff. Um, if there's some way I could like finesse, <laughs> finesse in like a grad program or some way to like have some sort of like composition track attached to it in some way and like compose in my masters, I'll do that. I wouldn't mind, oh, okay. but like, or if I can't, or whatever. But like, yeah, I do like to compose. I like to create things and hear other people's reactions to like hear, like what, what in my head does it sound good to you? Everything I play, everyone's like, man, this sounds like this can go in a Pokemon game. Or this sounds like this can go in an anime. Or this can sound like this. And I'm just like, I guess I'm an anime <laughs> video game composer. Like, this is going to be my life. And I choose to be a composer. Yeah. I mean, that'd be really cool. Because, like, I wouldn't mind, like, hearing something like that and, like, playing it. That would be really cool. Especially, like, if it was, like, Marimba. Like, oh, yeah. I'd yeah. definitely play that. I think it would be awesome if I was able to make something, make a little song, make like a small little like album track or something, and someone uses it for like an indie game of theirs, even if it's like, oh, this indie game, you can beat it in like an hour. It would be cool to have like music that I make go along with a little game in some way. Or like if I can make music for somebody's like, if someone has like a YouTube channel or they want like something for it, that would be cool. Oh. Okay, yeah, that would definitely be cool. Yeah, or like I'm trying to get a YouTube channel started out right now with um my friend Justin. I don't know if you I don't know if you know Justin Tarver. I do. He's, Piano player. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've been talking, he's been talking about it for years, and I've been talking about making a YouTube channel with him for years, and we were thinking about doing like a, not a podcast, but like just like a bunch of YouTube videos of us talking about music in some way. Um. I don't know. We haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> Would it be like in the same vein as like Adam Neely's way of talking about music? Uh, kinda, because he he's very good at he's very good at dissecting music like that, and I like watching videos like that. I like watching. I actually recently watched a Adam Neely video that caught my attention, and I was like, interesting, because. Maybe he feels the same way about, he was talking about contemporary Christian music. Well, maybe he feels the same way that I do about contemporary Christian music. Oh, I and, remember that video. Yeah, and I I, I, I dig I dig that. I was like, okay, I, I get the video. Um, but yeah, it'll probably be like stuff like that. Um, and not necessarily like if you watch 8-Bit Theory, not like 8-Bit oh, yeah, Theory, I'll but like them. we'll discuss, oh, this sounds like this because of it being influenced by that. Because I can't go fully music theory into a lot of things. If you show it to me, I'm like, oh, that, that's what that is, you know? Or if you yeah. explain it, like if you say this is what that is, I understand what it is without you having to explain it. He's like, oh, that, that's like how that works. I'm like, oh, that's what it is? I'm like, oh, I already know how it works. 
Mm-hmm. But that's uh, we're still trying to figure that out. He wants to talk because we we always have discuss. We used to have discussions at work for hours when we were at American Pie about Kanye albums. Because one of his favorite rappers is Kanye, so we would just talk forever on albums, comparing albums, comparing sounds. So something yeah. like that. What is your favorite non-percussion instrument? Non-percussion? Yeah. Uh, I gotta think. Hmm. It's a tie. I'm not even gonna say because it's like it's technically in the family. Because piano is technically in the. It's. Yeah, it's one of those outliers. I was gonna say you could say yeah, piano you know. like synthesizer because yeah, so like because I wish I do wish I was way better than piano, but that, I'm gonna put that in its own bubble because that's its own thing. Yeah, I'll have to say either bass, bass guitar, or it's like bass guitar or I'm trying to think of a brass instrument because like I, I love. I love listening to breath. I gotta no. I go bass guitar or tenor saxophone specifically. So I used to play saxophone, and like tenor sax was just like my favorite to play out of everything. And then bass, because like I'm learning bass, and every yeah. single thing I hear a bass in it is like dope. Like bass guitar is amazing. Do you listen to Esperanza Spalding? I do. Yeah, my brother put me on to her. I was like, she sounds really good. Oh, she's very good. Heard her on the shuffle yeah. one day, and I was just like. Okay. I can't stop listening to Judas. That song. That bass line is Ooh. so good. That's a Chris. That's a Chris. That's a Chris bass line. It really is. Like when I hear a nice good bass line, I very much appreciate it. How I feel with every single like Starky song. Let's see, Starky Puppy song. Every single Wolf Pack song and <laughs> High Key, High Key Chan, the brother goes off in the new album. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in the Chan album, he goes off for no reason. All right. All right. Trying to think. Okay, I got this. We're going to do like, I'm going to think of five questions. And it comes the first thing on top of your head, okay? All right, five. All right, cool. Rapid fire questions. Alright, favorite album, favorite album right now? Favorite album right now? Oh gosh, favorite album right now. Uh, what was the last thing I was listening to? Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to it really quickly. I'm gonna go to it super quickly. My favorite album as of right now has to be <laughs> Uzi's Eternal Take. Okay. Favorite I didn't really listen to it for the fifth time. Favorite anime? Oh, really? currently, yeah. This is like the fifth time I've listened to this and it's been out. But uh, favorite anime? My Hero Academia. Okay. Favorite DCI? Favorite DCI? Oh, God. Um, after this past year. Ooh. That's a rough one. That's a rough one. I got to give it to Cavaliers. Okay. Favorite food? Favorite food? Oh, my. I love burritos, man. Burritos? Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's no doubt. Eesh. All right. Uh, greatest artist of all time. Greatest artist of all time. Oh, my gosh. Of all time. This is hard. I'm giving a lot of power to just one artist. You are. I am. His name keeps popping in my head, and it's just like stop. <laughs> I got it. I think I have to give this one to Kendrick. Okay. All right. I have to give it. To, I have to give it to Kendrick only because it's crazy because I've been re-listening back to Chance because I, I should have said this way earlier in my top three. I put Kanye as three. But sometimes Kanye fluctuates from three to four, and the person that beats him out most of the time is Chance the Rapper. Oh, is this I the big day took a that. the big day took a big hit from like because I like the album, but it wasn't like you know, it wasn't 
what I as a fan, it wasn't acid rap. It wasn't yeah. even Chance Three. Coloring Book was good. People didn't like Coloring Book because they were like, "Oh, acid rap." This is like, but Coloring Book's great. I enjoyed but, Coloring Book. I thought it was Coloring a good Book album. was a fantastic, flipping album. I loved it. And then Big Day came out. I was like, ah. Oh. I was like, this is alright. Yeah, I was like, this is alright. Hopefully, yeah. the next album will be a step up from Big Day and not another step down. I think another step down. I don't know what will happen to change. I don't know. I mean, as long as he keeps winning Grammys, I guess it won't matter. <laughs> That's all that matters, right? Just Grammys. Grammys. Yeah, tell Billie Eilish. Exactly. <laughs> I enjoy Billie Eilish's music. I don't know. I do. That's the thing. Like, I love her music. The music's, like, actually really good. And then she swooped up four Grammys in one go. <laughs> I know. That was really weird. That's crazy. You ever realize, like, people, like, actually, like, were really curious about what she looked like? Like, her body? You know, it was one of those, like, I didn't care because I'm just, like, people are just trying to, like, like, people are just trying to, like, you know, just see her body, whatever. And then I saw this BuzzFeed thing. I saw something on Snapchat, and it was talking about how, like, she, like, took her shirt off and everyone in the crowd was going crazy. And I was like, oh, that's cool, you know. Like, and she was just wearing, like, a tank top or, like, um, she was wearing something, like, you know. She wasn't, like, in her bra. But, like, I get why she did it. Yeah. yeah. Body body empowerment. Exactly. All that stuff. This must have been like people felt like when they first saw a woman's shoulder in like the eighteen hundreds. It's like they're just going crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I remember I forgot what it was. It was like some picture with her and some guys. And she was you know, I think she was just in a tank top. People were like, Oh my gosh, look at her and they were like, see this is why she wears baggy clothes so no one can say something about her. I was like I mean, yeah. Yeah. Also she was like seventeen months, so I was like I'm yeah. Well, no, no, now, now she's also, not. Yeah. Oh, it didn't, but yeah. Yeah, and then also, I didn't care. I just thought she made good music. Exactly. I didn't. I really didn't get. I didn't even know that was that was that big of a deal. She just wore baggy clothes, and I was like, oh, that's just her style. She's just out here looking like rappers from early two thousand. I know, and it worked for her. I was like, yeah. Yeah, it worked. Like, and I wasn't well, mad at the drip. I wasn't mad at all with the drip. Exactly. <laughs> okay, wait on. Aside from the fire, the, the rapid fire, I actually do have one last one. Yeah. What's the genre of music that people wouldn't really expect you to listen to? Like, everyone knows you listen to, like, rock and stuff like that. It's so, like, what's yeah. one that people wouldn't really expect you to listen to? Uh, let me think. I don't want to, I dare not say jazz because people who, like, look at a lot of things that I post. Or just like know like the things I listen to. They know I listen to like Sharky Fuck they know I listen to things like bands like Funky Knuckles and um bands like Wolf Tech. So I don't wanna say jazz. I mean I guess I could say jazz. No one would expect me to bust out some like sixties jazz and just oh, start yeah. playing it. Yeah. Um I guess one thing one genre two. I actually really like listening to art music in the like in the spectrum of like I like to listen to like listen to classical music from time to time. Like I'll sit down and listen to a symphony, or I'll listen to something from contemporary uh, early twentieth century music, you know, mm-hmm. or like late eighteen. Like I'll listen, like I'll, I'll listen to art music like that. And basically, music that we listen to for class that we have to learn about. I'll occasionally just I'm listening to some Beethoven today. Sure, it's Beethoven. Screw it, you know. Yeah. Nice. I guess I I, I yeah I, I can say that genre specifically. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, yep. That was that was not the answer I was expecting at all. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was not that. <laughs> okay. That's why yeah, I was like, I want to say, I want to say jazz. I wanted to say jazz, but like, I listen to too much Snarky Puppy. I share too much on Facebook about different jazz drum set players, mm-hmm. where it's not uncommon. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I have like no more questions. Like if I did, they'd all be anime based, <laughs> and I'm already at, in like an hour thirty on this thing. Like we've been oh, talking for over an hour. That's crazy. Oh, bet. That was- hey, that's good. That's a long episode. That's a solid episode. For yeah. a guest feature. Exactly. They're going to be like, wow, what were they talking about? Because I was like, 
Yeah. I'm glad that I got one because I was like, people are either gonna watch this if I had you on here or like I had Kataj. But they're like, oh, cool. Yeah, nah, bet, man. I really, I've never, I've never done this. Uh, I wanted to do it. And it'll mentally prepare me for whenever I have my channel with Justin. And it's nice. cool. We got nothing. We got nothing else to do around here besides play video games, watch TV, and you know other adult stuff. So. Exactly. What about your classes, yeah. though? Oh, my classes. Uh, most of my classes either I don't have to do work until the end of April, which is a blessing, or I've already finished most of it. Like I have one more paper to do for an education class, and then I'm done. But that's not due until the 27th. Hey. Uh, and then I have like other papers that are due at the end of the, you know, and then I have a Spanish thing actually that's due in three days, but I've already done half of it. Oh no. Oh no, there you go. Yeah, it said low battery on the uh, iPad. I was like, oh God, it just canceled everything. But yeah, no, classes are, classes are fine. I've been, oh yeah, that's been about it. I've just been bored most of the day. Cause it's like when I do my homework, what am I going to do for the other 13 hours of the day? Besides sleep and play video games. Oh, yeah. I definitely felt that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Martez, so much for joining me on this thing. That was, this was actually a lot oh, of fun. I enjoyed this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, no, it was great. No, it was great. Yeah. But I'm getting, like, really hungry now. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah, those dinner. pizza rolls I devoured. The pizza rolls. Those pizza bagels I devoured earlier helped me. That's what's up. That's going to be it. It's gonna be an interesting first half of the podcast. It's just like me eating the pizza bagels. <laughs> He's like, yeah. And another like, thing. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's the ASMR. <laughs> oh no. But yeah, man, thanks for letting me do this. Thanks for having me. Oh uh, yeah, you're welcome, man. Anytime. We can come back on oh, here and yeah. discuss uh, anime. Oh, yeah, we I can actually wouldn't anime. mind doing that at all. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Hit me back up for sure. All right, come back here. Like the next guess is you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! For the next four weeks, Martez, straight Martez. Just straight me for like the month. I mean, the month of April is just me guest guest starring on <laughs> each one. Exactly. It's like mm-hmm. you get any new guests? Not for the next month. <laughs> Solid book. Mm-hmm. Oh man. All right, man. Right, you, you be safe out here. You too. All right. Peace out. Peace, man.